I don't know if you're following what's going on in China right now, but some are saying China's going through a real estate apocalypse, literally. I mean, think about how competitive these guys are. Some can say Americans are the most competitive people in the world. However, did you know China has a city called Tianduchang that they built the exact Eiffel Tower in that city? They built a strip just like Champs-Élysées where in the real estate that you buy in the city is so expensive, kind of like how it is in France. That's how competitive this place is. However, China's got a big problem. Something crazy just happened this last month. Country Garden Holdings, which is their biggest real estate company developer in China that did 441 billion wands last year, just missed the debt payment. You ever missed a credit card payment? You were like, I forgot to make that payment. Who calls you? The credit card company. They just missed a debt payment. You know how much it was? Just 20 million wands. And they missed it. And in China, there's all these cities called ghost cities. They have 65 to 90 million vacant homes. Everybody's looking at the data saying China's selling themselves as they're doing really good. But wait till you see when we compare them to another case study of another country that grew as fast as they did. You should see what happened to them next. If you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Do you remember earlier this year or last year when Silicon Valley Bank or Signature or it was a couple other ones that went out of business and others came and picked them up because they were rates were going up too quickly. They couldn't make their payments like, oh my God, what is going on over here? Now imagine if that happened to JP Morgan Chase or a BlackRock because this company we're talking about is not just one of the companies. It's the biggest company in the real estate development business. So when you look at this chart here from Country Gardens, dollar bonds slumped deeper to distress levels. Look at the date of June, middle of June. You see how it's around the 80 cents on a dollar? Look where it drops to by the end of July, to around 10 cents. It's nearly a 70% drop off in six weeks and you can't make a 20 million one payment? You're as big as you are, you can't make that payment, a debt payment? That's deeply concerning. And by the way, outside of those guys, new home sales by China's 100 biggest developers dropped by 33% in July from a year ago. When you look at the numbers here, this chart, developer finance and extend drops. Okay, you see the black, the pink, the blue, and the yellow. The black being self-raised funds, the pink being deposit and advance payments, the blue being personal mortgages, and the yellow being domestic borrowing. Look what happened in the middle of 2021, right there, how, how much it was peaking, around 1.8 trillion won, and look where it's at now, dropped to nearly 1.2 trillion one in just two years. Again, another reason why a lot of people are concerned about what's going on in China. However, let's continue. Why does this matter? Because more than 85% of China's houses are sold through pre-sale up from 50% in 2005, which means mortgages begin months or even years before buildings are finished. And by the way, the reason why this is important, just last year in 2022, October, there was a massive mortgage protest in China, nearly 100 plus cities, people coming out in WeChat, messaging each other saying, why are we making all these mortgage payments on a property that Evergrande, China Evergrande Group, is not even making any progress on? They're not even building it, but they're taking our payments. What is this all about? To the point where the government had to get involved and say, hey guys, you can't be doing this stuff. If if you're not building it, you can't ask people to make the payment. So many people were frustrated, not trusting what they were doing, leading to this now, this company that's even bigger than Evergrande. So now the reason why this is important is because in China, most of the money, the GDP is tied to real estate, very different than other countries. Just to kind of give you a comparison, here's what it looks like. China's real estate sector accounts for 30% of the country's total GDP. In US, the real estate sector is only 17%. In Japan, is 11%. Even in Canada, it's only 20%. But in China, it's 30 percent. So what does this mean? That means if there's any kind of movement in real estate, they feel it more because it's that bigger piece of GDP. Let me take you a little bit deeper on how much China believes in their own stock market versus other countries like America. Here's what the numbers look like. In China, only 7% of the population own stocks, while roughly 90% are homeowners. And to make that comparison in US, in US, roughly 53% of the country own stocks and only 65% of Americans own real estate. We're more balanced. They're not. They're all real estate nothing in stocks. What does that tell you? We don't believe in stocks. We believe in real estate. And not only do they own one home, 20% of folks in China own two or more homes. However, they don't believe in the Airbnb model like we do in America. They don't rent them out because they feel it loses value. They like to keep it brand new. So look, if you're running a business, one of the things that matters to business owners is jet fuel. You need jet fuel. What's jet fuel? Money. You need money. But today, a lot of business owners are saying, Pat, I want to go borrow and get some money, but the interest rates are so high. Where do I go? One of the options you have is a company called Funding Grow. 
Fund and Grow is a great sponsor because they understand how to help small businesses get the funding they need. Even in today's economy, they offer a 12-month membership that gives small businesses an alternative to traditional funding or gathering investors. They offer a way to get operating capital you need without having to deal with the current tedious and confusing red tape at banks. They help secure credit up to $250,000 with 0% interest and all without you giving up any equity of your company. These guys have a great online reputation with 4,000 reviews at 4.9. So for you watching this, Fund and Grow has a special masterclass where they teach you five steps on how to secure $250,000 on loan and to learn about the stuff. They have a $500 discount for all the people that are with Valuetainment. So if you want to learn more about this, go to fundandgrow.com forward slash PVD. Once again, fundandgrow.com forward slash PVD or go to the description. You'll see the link there. So now you may ask and say, why do they only put the money in real estate? Because if you look at the chart since 1998, what you'll notice is the average real estate sale price in China every year has gone up. Literally, if you look at this, pretty much every single year it's gone up and they can't necessarily say the same thing maybe about stock market or other investments. So they trust in real estate. And by the way, when you think about value real estate or expensive real estate, what city in the world do you think has the most expensive real estate? Some of you may say Beverly Hills, right? And how do we really define that math anyways? Here's how we do it. Whatever the average salary of a person in that city is to the actual average value of a home. For example, say you make $100,000 per year, but the average house value in that city is a million dollars, that's 10 times, make sense? Look at the most expensive real estate in the world comparing it to the average income of that city. Let me just show you this chart, hopefully this will make sense to you. When you look at this, look who you have all the way at the top, Beijing, meaning the average home there is 48 times the average salary of the city. That means most people cannot afford to buy a house in Beijing. Same with Shanghai, same with Hong Kong or Zhengzhen. And then it goes to London, but look how much of a drop off London is. It goes from 40, drops to 22. Then you got Bangkok, Sao Paulo, Rome, Moscow, Seoul, Paris, Munich, Tokyo. Then you get to New York, which is roughly 12. And the same is with San Francisco. So as much as we talk about how expensive real estate is in San Francisco and New York, it's almost four times more expensive in Beijing Shanghai, Hong Kong, or Zhengzhen. Now, keep in mind, that's all money. You may say, well, you got to figure out a way to make more money or go to move to a smaller city. Totally get it. But there's other kind of pressure there as well. One of them being social pressure. In China, because of the one-child policy that they had, there's 33.59 million more men than women in China in 2016. There's the mother-in-law economy that they talk about, which means what? Social pressure for men to go and ask someone's hand for marriage. Hey, I'd like to marry your daughter. They want you to own a home in China. If you don't and another man does, the family's willing to give their daughter up to a man with a home than one without a home. That's a lot of pressure for men in China. Look, there's a lot of pros to you growing fast, but they say there's two ways a company goes out of business. It grows too slow, it grows too fast. When you grow too fast, if you all of a sudden don't have enough inventory or customers, there's a lot of problems there. If you cannot deliver on your promises, things can break. People are unhappy, so they leave. China may have the fastest growing urbanization in the history of mankind, when you look at this data, how they either took regular areas that were rural and they turned it into cities, or people left those areas to go into cities and migrate into cities. Look what the numbers look like from 1980 till today. 1980, it was roughly 19.39% of the population that lived in urban areas. To today, it's 65.22. That's almost 50% in 42 years. But if you look at from 2000 till today, in 2000, they were at 36%, today they're at 65. When you grow that fast, things are going to break and they're kind of going through it today. So, so the urbanization is just one of the issues that they're having grown too fast. But outside of that, one of the problems they're having right now is with deflation. So you know how in US we're like, oh my God, look what's going on with unemployment or look what's going on with all this inflation that we have. What do we do? Raise the interest rates once, twice, three, four, five. Oh, you know what? Inflation is gradually coming down. So the, the Fed has a way of cooling up the economy or heating up the economy if they choose to. Like when we went to a 128 month expansion that we have an economic expansion, we lowered the rates so low that everybody was just borrowing, borrowing, borrowing money. So the economy in China is kind of cooling up. They're kind of scared saying, what is going on? People are no longer spending. They're hanging on to cash because they're scared and they're not putting in the stock market. So the economy has to figure out a way to heat it up again in a fake way. So how do you do it? Make financing easier, lower rates, start giving 25 year loans to people above the age of 70, like assuming they're going to live up to 95. Stuff that just makes no sense. That's kind of what they're going through right now to get people buying again. Because again, they got 65 to 90 million vacant properties. Someone's got to buy these places. So as if this isn't enough problems. And by the way, if you don't know the history of China, China owns 100% of the land. Like in China, if you own a property, you may own the property, but you're leasing it from the government 20 to almost like 70 or 90 years. You don't own the land in China. 
the government owns the land in China. Or maybe it's shared by the government, maybe with you, but they own 100% of the land in China. Kind of weird, but that's what socialism and communism does. However, the bigger the problem they're facing right now is the unemployment amongst the youth. They have around 140 million folks between the ages of 15 to 24 years old. And look what their unemployment looks like. If you look at this chart from 2003 till now, it shows it goes from 9.61 to 13.16. But if you continue, look how high that thing goes in China, all the way up to 21% of kids and some young adults that cannot get a job right now. 21%, obviously, that's also very problematic because if you can't get your youth working, what are they going to be doing? So obviously, you know, if you don't follow the story in China, you may be thinking, oh my God, China's crushing it. They're going to be passing up America very soon, all this stuff. We've all said it, right? That we fell for that. This is what's going to be taking place. Again, there's two reasons why companies go out of business. You either grow too fast, you grow too slow. In this instance, they're growing way too fast and another country went through it. So the deflation cycle that they're going through causes a few things. One, consumption goes down. People don't want to spend money. They want to save money. Number two, businesses cut prices. Consumers expect for prices to go down, so they hold off with purchases. Businesses lay off employees. And obviously, all of this adds up. And the other country that went through this years ago was Japan. Look how fast Japan grew from 1969 to 1990. When you see the numbers all the way to the left, look at that spike on how the Nikkei 225 stock market index grew that quickly and everybody was saying Japan is the way to go look at the cars they're making look at all the stuff that they're doing we were studying them so quickly we were all studying what Japan was doing all of a sudden look at the drop from the peak of 1990 today's 2023 and they haven't even gotten close to the numbers they had in 1990 that's 33 years ago China fears the same exact thing that happened to Japan is about to happen to them. So what is all this mess leading up to? Is it like, oh, we're the only ones that knows that this is taking place? Let me just say what millionaires and billionaires are doing in China right now. Here's an article from CNBC. China to see the world's biggest millionaire exodus this year. New study shows, this is from a month ago, two months ago. Data shows that 10,800 high net worth individuals migrated out of China in 2022, and they're expecting another 13,500. And outside of this article, a Reuters article just came out with this, saying China's super rich population drops as tech crackdown, global factors, hurt wealth. Look at the numbers with China. More than 400 people lost their billionaire status last year, most from China. China lost 229 billionaires from Huran Global Rich List in 2023. These are folks that are no longer making that kind of money and they're looking at elsewhere. Where can I take my family? And by the way, sometimes when you leave China, you can't take your money with you. It's a very different kind of a climate to be there. What's the moral of the story here? When the government tries to fabricate the economy to either cool it off or control it, they do it everywhere. We do it in America. Matter of fact, ours controls some of the economies around the world when we try to cool it off or heat it up when we're like dealing with interest rates. So look, when you look at these numbers, the same can be said with a business. When you're growing too fast, if you don't have enough products to fill in the buyers, you're going to cause a lot of buyers to be sitting two, four, six, eight weeks to receive the product. They're not going to be happy. It's kind of what's going on over there in China. And then at the same time, when you look at China, their population is 1.44 billion, but they have 658 million homes in China. So if you say the average house has three people living there or four people living there, what? why do you have 658 million homes when you only have 1.44? It seems like a big number, but it's not a big, you have way too many empty places. Why produce products and places to live when you don't have enough people to want to buy? This is all fake economy. This is the fake success that we experience in America where a lot of people made a lot of money. They bought all the fancy stuff and then boom, it disappeared. On a larger scale, China's going through it right now. We're going to see how they handle this. We're going to see what decisions they make politically. Do they get involved? Do they kind of stay out of it? Knowing their philosophy, how it is, they feel they want to control everything. They don't want anything to get out of their hands. But does this also mean they're already in net negative migration? Is that going to skyrocket with people leaving? Who knows? But the next 12, 24, 36 months, I would watch very closely to see what happens to China. If you got value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I got another video I want you to watch that has to do with China's catastrophic mistake they made years ago. When you see these numbers, it's absolutely insane. If you've not seen it, click here to watch it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.